In the late 1970s, America was running out of patience and fuel. Gas prices were climbing, drivers were desperate for relief, and General Motors thought it had the perfect answer. Oldsmobile rolled out a brand new diesel engine, promising incredible mileage and long cruising ranges that would keep big luxury cars alive. It sounded like a breakthrough that could save the company, but what rolled off the assembly line became one of the most notorious engineering failures in automotive history. So why did this engine fail so badly? And how did it drag Oldsmobile down with it? In this video, we will uncover the rise and collapse of Oldsmobile's diesel program, the fallout that spread across GM's most iconic brands, and the lasting legacy of a gamble that turned into a disaster. Let's dive in. In October 1973, the oil embargo from the Arab petroleum exporting countries flipped the American car market upside down. Long before hybrid engines or electric cars, fuel was the lifeblood of the economy. Suddenly, prices spiked, shortages hit every state, and the image of drivers lined up at gas stations became the defining snapshot of the decade. The country had spent years embracing heavy V8-powered land yachts that guzzled fuel at barely 10 miles per gallon. The embargo made those cars look like dinosaurs overnight. And when a second crisis struck in 1978, General Motors scrambled to find an answer before its crown jewels, the luxury divisions, collapsed under their own weight. The task fell to Oldsmobile. At the time, Olds was one of GM's strongest brands, moving millions of cars annually. Engineers were ordered to take the company's existing 350 cubic inch gasoline V8 and quickly rework it into a diesel. The pitch was enticing. Diesel fuel cost nearly a third less than gasoline, and a properly tuned diesel promised highway mileage of 30 miles per gallon with a cruising range of 700 miles. That kind of efficiency could keep giant sedans like the Oldsmobile 98 or Cadillac Fleetwood on the road without bankrupting their owners at the pump. GM sold the idea as innovation under pressure, marketing it as a lifeline for American drivers who didn't want to downsize to small imports. But that urgency created blind spots. The program had tight deadlines, limited budgets, and little patience for extensive testing. In many ways, GM treated the project like a stopgap, not a revolution. And that decision would define everything that followed. The Oldsmobile diesel engine wasn't developed from scratch. Instead, it was retrofitted from a gasoline V8 with only minimal changes to save money and speed up production. That decision set the stage for catastrophic failures. One of the most glaring mistakes was keeping the same 10-bolt cylinder head design used on the gas motor. In a gasoline engine, the compression ratio hovers around 8.5 to 1, so the head bolts don't face extreme stress. Diesel engines demand far more compression, 22.5 to 1 in Oldsmobile's case, which meant every bolt was under three times the pressure it was designed to handle. Under normal driving, those bolts stretched and broke, leading to the engines failing in as little as 30,000 miles. The problems didn't stop there. Another key omission was the lack of a water separator in the fuel system. Diesel fuel in the late 1970s was inconsistent and often contaminated with water. Without a separator, water pooled in the injectors and pumps, corroding components and killing engines prematurely. Many owners resorted to pouring alcohol additives into the tank to try to dissolve the water. It worked temporarily, but the alcohol attacked rubber seals and hoses, creating an entirely new set of breakdowns. On top of that, GM fitted the engine with a rubber timing belt that was nowhere near durable enough for the loads involved. Over time, the belt stretched, throwing off the engine's timing. Valves and pistons slipped out of sync, leading to severe misfires or outright destruction of the motor. By the time these issues surfaced, thousands of cars were already on the road, leaving dealers overwhelmed with warranty claims. With those flaws baked into the design, the failure spread across every GM division that carried the engine. And when the problems went public, the fallout became a brand-killing storm that swept across Cadillac, Buick, Chevrolet, and beyond. By 1979, the Oldsmobile diesel engine wasn't confined to Oldsmobile alone. General Motors pushed the LF9350 cubic inch diesel into nearly 30 different models across its empire. Buick, Pontiac, Chevrolet, Cadillac, 
and even GMC trucks carried the motor. The idea was to give every division a fuel-saving option, but instead, the flaws spread like wildfire. Suddenly, America's most prestigious badge, the Cadillac Fleetwood, was rolling off the line with the same unreliable diesel that was already crippling Oldsmobile sedans. Even Checker taxicabs briefly ran them, only to add to the mountain of complaints. The failures were relentless. Head gaskets let coolant seep into the cylinders, and oil pans filled with water until lubrication disappeared. A Cadillac limousine powered by an underbuilt diesel and a fragile transmission was an engineering mismatch that symbolized how far GM's judgment had slipped. Drivers lived with cars that smoked heavily, shook violently at idle, and produced a smell that clung to clothing. Performance was equally humiliating. A full-size Oldsmobile with the diesel took nearly 20 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, a figure that made the cars not only unpleasant but unsafe in traffic. Resale values collapsed as buyers avoided anything with a diesel badge. By the early 1980s, thousands of warranty claims had drained GM's coffers, while class-action lawsuits piled up from angry owners. The Federal Trade Commission received complaints accusing GM of false advertising, arguing that buyers were misled about durability and savings. Oldsmobile had gambled its reputation across the GM lineup, but even as the lawsuits hit and customers fled, engineers were working on a revised design. The question was whether a second chance could undo the damage, or if trust was already gone for good. By 1982, Oldsmobile engineers finally introduced what the diesel program should have looked like from the start. The new 4.3-liter V6 diesel wasn't a hasty retrofit, but a proper redesign. It featured a denser 18-bolt head pattern to secure the cylinder heads under high compression, a stronger forged crankshaft, longer head bolts to reduce flex, and crucially, a water separator to filter contaminated fuel. For the first time, GM delivered a diesel engine that could hold its own in terms of reliability. Road tests showed it could run 200,000 miles with proper maintenance, something the early V8s could only dream of. On paper, it was the redemption Oldsmobile desperately needed. The smaller V6 produced 85 horsepower and 165 pound-feet of torque, not earth-shattering figures, but steady and predictable. In everyday driving, it was smoother, more efficient, and far less prone to catastrophic failure. Yet, by the time it arrived, the market had already turned away. Sales of diesel passenger cars in the U.S. plummeted from nearly 300,000 units in 1981 to barely a fraction by 1985. California regulators tightened emissions rules, banning the Olds V8 diesel outright by 1984. Even the improved V6 couldn't escape the shadow of its predecessor's reputation. Customers simply didn't trust GM anymore. Word of mouth killed interest and dealers often struggled to move inventory. Competitors like Mercedes-Benz, which had well-engineered diesels, benefited from the collapse while GM's attempt was mocked as a cautionary tale of arrogance and cost-cutting. By 1985, Oldsmobile pulled the plug entirely, ending its diesel experiment. And when General Motors announced Oldsmobile's closure in 2000, officially ending the brand in 2004, analysts pointed to the diesel program as one of the first big cracks in its image of dependability. It became a case study in how poor decisions at the top can sink a division that once sold over a million cars a year. The impact went further than Oldsmobile. American drivers associated diesel engines with noise, smoke, and unreliability for years after. While Europe thrived on efficient, well-built diesels through the 1990s and early 2000s, the U.S. market resisted them. A single failed program poisoned the well for an entire fuel type. So what's your take on Oldsmobile's diesel gamble? Do you think the brand could have survived if they had gotten it right the first time? Drop your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more such deep dives into the stories that shape the auto industry. Until next time, thanks for watching.